Hello you absolute legends. Welcome back to Life on the Ranch. Today we're going to make a pasta. With rising food prices and falling food quality, well, we might as well learn to feed ourselves and feed ourselves well. If you make a large batch, you can always take the sauce and put it into freezer containers and freeze the excess. And you can enjoy it later too without having to do all the work. Work now, eat later. So today's pasta is going to be a nice turkey pasta. We're going to have some delicious green peppers in there. We have lots of celery in there. We have some zucchinis in there. We're going to sneak some carrots in there for the kids. They won't even notice. Get some onion. You need that onion. We have some mushroom in there because mushrooms are nice. We're going to use some garlic in there because garlic's good for everything. So we're going to start by taking our base tomato sauce. Dump that into a pot. And don't worry if you can't use the entire can of tomato sauce. You can still put it in a bag and freeze it for later. But do not put your can of tomato sauce in the fridge. I mean, unless you're into botulism and E. coli. Because that stuff grows in cans in the fridge. And it's no good. Just put it in a bag and be safe, legends. So let's grab some of what we'll need for our tomato sauce. Some nice basil leaves, those are delicious. Basil and tomato just pair amazingly well together. Don't go too overboard, legends. Maybe about two tablespoons would be good. Parsley, parsley in everything. You know, you could use a quarter cup if you're really feeling adventurous. Or you can go with about two tablespoons again. Parsley is really good to help with digestion. And then, of course, I found Clubhouse brand Greek Spice Mix. It's just amazing stuff. Adds so much flavor to whatever you put it in. Again, about two tablespoons. Just toss it into your base sauce there. Give it some seasoning. And legends, don't forget to salt every layer. Good old sea salt, coarse grind. Nice big rocky stuff. You don't need a lot, maybe a tablespoon at best. Now that you've got all that in the pan, give it a little bit of low heat and let it go for a few minutes. Mix it all together so everything can blend and start to marinate. At this point you can get away with a whisk. Because you're simply just mixing the sauce and seasoning. Remember, legends, these seasoning levels are not set in stone. You can season as much or as little as you like. If you like more of something, add more of it. If you like less of something, add less of it. Now we're going to move on to our vegetable prep for the pasta. Get yourself an empty container to put all your scrap in. Take your mushrooms. Take the stem off, because those are often bitter. And then peel it. Start at the back, grab hold of that little flap, just pull. Comes right off for you. Just make sure large mushroom's a little nicer. And then to prevent your sauce from making a giant mess everywhere, just throw a lid on top. The lid will catch all those tomato splashes. So now you want to cut up your mushroom. I like to start by cutting them in half. And I just go sideways for long, thin slices. Nice big chunks. But not too big, about the size of your thumbnail. 
big enough. And with that, you want to grab your bench scraper and your bowl of mushrooms, put them all together. Because mushrooms have their own separate special cook time. You got your mushrooms in there. You'll notice I've already done some of this prep ahead. And your garlic, take the edge of your knife, put it on your garlic, give it a whack. And that'll break it up, causing the skin to easily peel off. Just like that. If you're worried about the knife, use your dough scraper. It does the exact same job as the knife, only it doesn't have any sharp edges. So your dough scraper can't possibly cut you. It's got a blunted edge for scraping counters. It's actually a baker's tool, but it's also good in the kitchen. You just want to take and rough chop it up into larger chunks at first. Just a quick breakdown, then just take and dice it up a little more. It doesn't have to be so small that you can't see it. Just small little chunks is good. Throw it in your bowl. So I've got a bowl here with garlic and with onions because they take about the same time to cook. You want to take your onion, make sure you have a nice sharp knife so then you don't have to listen to their sad stories. The stories that always make you cry. But it's not the sad stories the onions tell that make you cry. It's when you use a dull knife. That's what bruises the onion cells, causing it to leak and juice everywhere. Once the onion juice gets into the air, and that's what brings tears to your eye. Or just put in a set of headphones and don't listen to the sad tales that they tell. Sharp knife or earplugs, both are good for cutting onions. You want to take your onion, cut onto it sideways. So you'll notice how it's cut this way, right? Not, see it's long ways. Have a nice sharp knife, you make nice close cuts together, you get small, tiny little chunks. Something a quarter of the size of your thumbnail. And you just cut the short ways on it. Doing so, you end up with this beautiful diced onion. And again, cut the other one the same way. As you did the last half. Remember, legends always put safety first when you're cutting with your knives because you want to keep those fingers intact. Slice, slice, slice. Get to about where it's nice and thin like that. You just tip it over. You'll have just a few more bits of the cut left. Then you just cut it lengthwise. Couple of two or three times, however much it needs, and you just dice, dice, dice. And there you have it, a fully diced onion, real quick, real easy, legendary. So your garlic and onions can go together; they cook at about the same time. If you have really picky kids in the house that don't like onion, well, just keep it separate because you can cook the onion a little longer than the garlic. But you don't want to cook your garlic too long because it will burn. And ain't nobody like burnt garlic.
Next, you want to take your carrot. Take your end off, throw that in your scraps bowl. You got chickens, well, that bowl of scraps will be the best thing they've seen all day. So then you want to cut your carrots into what look like boards. They're just long, thin pieces of carrot. Do it again. Cut them down, cut them down, cut them down. And then take your carrot boards and cut them into sticks. Cut them down, cut them down, cut them down. So you want all your carrot sticks to be about the same thickness, more or less. Don't worry if they're not the perfect thickness, it's, it's alright, you're the only one eating it. You take your sticks and you cut those down. You'll end up with little cubes. So then you'll end up with these beautiful little carrot cubes. Throw those into your bowl with all the rest of your carrot stuff. This thing needs a drop of water, it's too thick. find your tomato sauce is too thick and bubbly on the stove, just add a bit of water. It will cook out. As the tomato sauce heats up and does its thing, the water just slowly evaporates. So take and cut all your carrots into little sticks. And then set those aside for a second. And once all your carrot sticks are cut, them back over and take some carrot sticks and now make carrot cubes. You don't need to do them all at once, just do a couple at a time, however many you're comfortable with handling. If you put 10,000 hours on a knife like I have, you could do the whole batch at once. If you've only put 10 hours on the knife, maybe just do one stick at a time. It'll take you a little longer to get through it all, but I'm sure you, like me, have grown attached to your fingers over the years. And you like them to stay right where they're to. Right here on the end of your hand. Next, we're going to do our celery. So you want to take that end up, it's not that great for anything. You want to cut your celery into sticks again. Three to four sticks, depending on the thickness of the celery stock. And again, just dice it up like you just did with the carrot. scraper, scrape it into the bowl with your celery and your carrots. So you'll have a bowl of celery and carrots all together. They cook at about the same time. Next up we're going to do our zucchini. So we take the end off, take the flower tip off, stem end, flower end. And then you want to just cut it into fours. Cut it in half, cut it in half. At that point, you'll end up with four strips of zucchini. You then want to take your zucchini and put it sideways and hold your knife on an angle. Slice along, separating the zucchini from the seeds. If you're really worried about food costs and don't like to waste it, you can eat the seeds. It's just when you cook them, they get soggy and they're not as nice to eat. So just take those off. 
set it aside, move on to the next one. Take it off, set it aside, rinse and repeat. Now that you've got all your zucchini prepped, take those sticks, cut them in half again. Set them aside. Now you have all your sticks cut up in half. Now you take as many sticks as you can handle and you start dicing them. You want to have them in a small dice because that's easier to get out of your fork when you're working up your pasta. they're not all perfect as long as they're within reasonably close sizes of each other that's close enough for what we need here we're no Michelin star kitchen so we don't need to be Michelin perfect close enough is good enough remember to keep on your tomato sauce to burn. So now if you take your pepper and you look at it from the bottom, you'll see it has these ribs running around on it. Now the secret is, and nobody tells you this, cut down those ribs. Follow those ribs all the way up to the stem core here. You don't need to go very deep. Just a little bit on the tip of your knife. See, it's not very deep. Follow those around, follow those around, follow those around. Some peppers have three, some peppers have four. So when you're done, your pepper will be cut up kind of like this. So now take it and break it off. Right there, that was your stem core. So now you got all the seed parts. It comes cleanly off. You have this piece here, you just get rid of it. And there you have it, you're like 95% seed free already. And in doing so, you've wasted almost 0% of your pepper. Give them a light tap, knock out those few remaining seeds that are hiding in there. If you get a big chunk like that, make your life easy, cut it in half. And I like to cut the tip and the tail off. Set it aside, tip and tail. So the top. And the tail, so you end up with like a nice, easy to cut piece. These white ribs inside, cut them out, they're bitter, they're no good to eat. Doesn't add any flavor to your pepper. And you're not wasting any, but anything by doing that. Set those aside. We'll put those over here, we'll put these over here. So now you take your chunks of pepper that you just cut off, the tips and tails, and cut those down into little chunks. So much easier to do your peppers this way, now you don't have these tips and tails curling in on you, getting in the way. Dice those up, set them aside. Dice, 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 set aside, set aside. Dice, 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 set aside, set aside. Again, you're looking for something the size of your thumbnail the size of your thumbnail. You don't want big chunks, you want small, easy to eat pieces. Now that you've got all that done, you're onto these big chunks here. So, cut those into strips. And take your strip, cut those into cubes. Again, about the size of your thumbnail. and easy to go through, quick, easy peasy. Alright, so now take your peppers, add that to the bowl with your zucchinis. So 
would be the zucchinis and peppers. They have very similar cook times as well. The reason we keep everything separate like this is because all of these fantastic ingredients have varying cook times. Some are quick, some are medium time, some are a little bit longer, some are kind of slow. So now at this point, I've got all my veg is done. My cutting board has no more vegetable use, I'll cut up my meat. So here I have some old turkey meat left from last time I did a turkey. So today we're just going to make a nice turkey dinner pasta. Cut down your chunks of turkey meat. If you like them a little bit larger, keep them a little bit larger. If you like them really fine, dice it really fine. You can use ground beef, you can use ground pork, you can use chunks of pork. You can omit the meat altogether and go vegetarian style. Whatever you like, Legends, it's your pasta. You enjoy it. a little filled up and crowded. Just transfer it to the bowl. Give yourself space to work. You don't need to crowd yourself out on your cutting board legends. Leave space for yourself to work in. It's legendary to have space to work in legends. It's legendary. Try and move yourself to the piece you're working with, Legends. Turn the piece so it's easy for you to work with. It's at the angle you're working at. You don't need to work at whatever angle it's sitting at. You can have it work at the angle you're working at. So now we're going to get the turkey chopped up. right back after a quick cleanup and we're back legends now we've got our cast iron skillet I love my cast iron it's the best thing in the world it's all I want to cook with but sometimes I have to use regular pots because I don't have cast iron boiling pots Unfortunately, some of my other pans are not as clean as I would like them to be. Or as clean as I would like them to be. I mean, they're not clean. So, I gotta use other utensils. So now for boiling the water for our pasta, make sure that it is salty. Like salty as the Dead Sea. You want salt in your pasta water. Can you add too much salt? Well, yes, you can. But you want to add a lot, probably two to three tablespoons. You want that water to be salty. Why do you want that water to be salty? So that way the pasta absorbs the salt in the water. That's where your flavor comes from. So we'll give our skillet here a minute to get up to temp. In turn, we're going to rinse this lid off. This lid over here fits this pan over here so we can get that pasta water up to temp a little bit faster.
So as you can see by the way the oil is moving, you can tell it's starting to get up to temp. You can see that splash of tomato sauce in there. It's starting to bubble, which means that it's starting to get up to temp. You want to make sure your pan is nice and hot when you start. So once you throw your veg in there, it's going to drop the temp real quick. Let's taste the sauce. Tastes very nice. Nice balance of basil, not too salty. Nice bit of parsley in there. It's very good. So now we could probably get rid of the whisk because we won't need that for the sauce anymore. see it's nice and hot now so you want to start with your celery and carrots that's the kind of sound you should hear when they go into the pan nice rip and sizzle Now at this point, you want to use a bit of a finer salt. So I'm just going to use my salt grinder and grind in a bit of salt. Not a lot, maybe half a teaspoon's worth. The salt will just help to pull the moisture out of what you're frying. Give it a bit of a mix around, let it do its thing, get all sizzly soft. You want to let those carrots that are in celery get soft. And we'll be back once we move on to the next phase. And through the power of editing, your celery is see somewhat see-through and your carrots are very soft. So they're ready to head into the next phase, the sauce portion. And next you want to add your zucchinis and peppers. And cook them for a bit and we'll be back when they're ready to move on. Don't forget to salt everything as you go. Every, every ingredient you put into the pan needs about a half a teaspoon of salt. And through the power of more editing, we're back. The zucchinis and peppers are nice and soft at this point now, so they're good to go in. Now you don't have to cook them until they're super soft. If you like them a little crunchier, put them in crunchier. If you like them really crunchy, you can put them in raw if you wanted to. The options are optional as to how you do it, my friends. My pan's getting a little bit to the warm side. Now the mushrooms. Just a little bit more oil. And away we go. Don't forget your salt. back when we're moving on and after a minute or two when your onions are about halfway sweat down add your garlic and onions and a dash more salt you have to salt everything every layer and you just want to cook your onions so they're somewhat see-through Shouldn't take but a minute or two at that size. And if you feel you need a bit more oil, add a drop more. And we need our pass into the boiler. Might as well put the rest of the bag in. It's not a lot. Cast a boiling pot, it's not as big as I would prefer, but it works for what it needs to do. 
So at this point you should have what looks like the startings of a nice chunky pasta sauce. Fantasticness at its finest. And we'll be back when the onions are done in like two minutes. And we're back. So your celery and carrots cook time on that. It's about seven to eight minutes. Your zucchinis and peppers cook time on that. It's about five to six minutes. And your mushrooms and onions cook time on that is about two to three minutes. None of it takes forever, but it does take different lengths of time, so I thought I'd let you know all the different time lengths. Let's get that moved up to the back side for now. And you'll notice I've also added the turkey right into the sauce at this point. We're just going to get everything blending together. Give it a good mix. Throw down the heat for a minute. Don't forget to stir your pasta. I had it turned down so that's why it's not boiling right away, but there it is. When you're done, strain your pasta, toss it into the sauce. We'll be back when we're at that point. And we're back. So now you got a couple choices here, legends. You can either throw some pasta sauce onto your pasta because you made a large batch of sauce and a small batch of pasta. With the intention of freezing sauce, you can have pasta later. Ten minutes to make the noodles and half a day to defrost your sauce. Or you made a small batch of pasta sauce and you just throw all your noodles and sauce together. You have some leftovers or eat it all tonight. Or you throw your pasta into the sauce and freeze it ready-made pasta and sauce. And it takes you as long as it takes to reheat. And you got pasta.